in the planning, lots of care and dedication, a brand new aircraft and a record to be broken, the longest flight in the world. Here we go, wheels up. 16 hours left of flying. Nothing really much to do really except keep an eye on things, climb as high as we can, communicate with air traffic control, nothing exciting, which is how I like it. So this is the selection of food that is served immediately after takeoff. I've chosen to have all three of the main options. What's this? Oh, this is, uh, we call it guayu. So this is for us to um, this, um, dispose all the uh, like liquids which is with cups so that it won't choke the sink. Oh, yeah. I thought it was the rice maker. <laughs> okay, so we've got 11 and a half hours still to go. Most of the plane is asleep. I can't sleep yet. I want to save my sleep to the last six or seven hours of the flight so I'm fresh and reland in the early morning. So that means time for movies. And on this flight there are hundreds and hundreds. So we did a quite a number of flight trials. Most of the passengers, after the first meal, they will sleep about six, six hours, and then they wake up, they're looking for food to eat. We're now two hours out of Newark Airport. Time to get dressed once again. I always get dressed for about this time before landing on a long flight. Well, the bathrooms get rather nasty. This A350 has 161 passengers on board. There's no economy class here, but there is premium economy. And morning, good flight. Morning, morning. What do you think of it? Good. Longest flight in the world. Do you, en do you enjoy it? Yes. Good. Yay. And so we have arrived, 17 hours and 25 minutes, a quicker crossing because of the excellent tailwinds. This flight, along with the other ultra-long hauls, usher in an entirely new era of travel. Longer distances, any two places on the globe can now pretty much be joined up. The world really is now our oyster. <laughs>